A very good morning to each one of you. On behalf of Bangalore Chamber of Industry and Commerce, we welcome you all for that exclusive webinar on digital transformation using the platform of 5G. The session is addressed by Mr. Shankar Vishwanathan, CIO of Sundaram Clayton Limited. Thank you very much, sir, for accepting our invitation to address the members of the chamber. Thank you. Uh, the session is organized under the AGs of Industry 4.0 Expert Committee, chaired by Mr. A. N. Chandramari, um, who is the chairman of our Industry 4.0 Expert Committee, co chaired by Mr. Jagan Nathan, CEO of M2 Next, a BFW subsidiary, and co also co chaired by Mr. Uh, Saju, Senior Vice President and Plant Head of ABB India Limited. Um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, to Mr. Chandramani sir for structuring and initiating this webinar. And uh, I also welcome our president, uh, Dr. Devarajan, who is also the senior vice president of TVS Motor Company Limited. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, you know, participation at the session. And uh, I, I feel it my privilege to extend a hearty uh, birthday wishes to our president on today's occasion. And we wish you oh. many more happy returns of the day, sir. And uh, thank, you thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much thank for you. being such a wonderful guide, supporter, and uh, mentor to the chamber activities. Thank you. So it is not only thank a you. holy day, it is also a holiday. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Special day. Uh, the chamber thank acknowledges you. its immense support uh, to our members member organizations who are the annual sponsors um, comprising Brigade, Bueller, Continental, Fundamax, IAMPL, MPR, Ramaya Institute of Management, SBMIMD, Solar Group of Companies, TBS Motor and Vishwas Group for their immense support in the activities of the Chamber. Uh, thank you once again for all the participants on joining this session and uh, I would like to uh, request Dr. Devrajan to say a few words about the session. Over to you, sir. And yeah, post yeah. your address, I will hand over the platform to Mr. Chandra Modi. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And good morning to uh, Shankar Chandra Modi san and to all the members who are participating today. Thank you very much. And first of all, uh, wishing you all uh, a holy, excellent uh, holy day today. I hope. Uh, uh, the friendship begins here, and we'll have more and more participation in the seminars of BCIC also. Uh, Shankar, for your information, um, uh, BCIC is 47 years old. We have uh, more than 850 members, uh, members including Toyota, Volvo, Bosch, TVS, and many of the small-scale industries, uh, education institutions, startups, all are part of our uh, uh, chamber and we are close knit chamber. Uh, very, uh, we mingle ourselves very well. We discuss each other. Bring what are the practices available, share with all the members, take it with the government. And we do this uh, by 28 expert committees. We have 28 expert committees, uh, including finance, taxation, um, manufacturing, EV, industry 4.0, and uh, ESG. Um, education, many, many, I think we got all the all the committees. We take very closely with the government, work along with each other, and share the best practices. And we also acknowledge by having leadership talk once in every month. We have uh, the leadership summit, the EB summit, the manufacturing summit. We also uh, encourage and uh, acknowledge by lead women's leadership awards, startup awards. Uh, ESG awards as we go forward. So it has been a, a good journey in terms of this year also. Normally we have more than uh, around 200 seminars uh, every year. Uh, that means to say one seminar almost every day. And we continue to have the same trend this year also. Uh, I, I really acknowledge and uh, thank uh, Chandamoli San, who is the uh, chair of the uh, past president and chair of uh, Industry 4.0. And I think this 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 um, has the maximum number of uh, seminars this year. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your excellent contribution, bringing all the latest things to the team, uh, which is very very helpful. And uh, including visit to Shaji ABB in many places, 
that the 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 committee has done an excellent job. Thank you very much. And today's topic is the most critical one because, as we see, we always say the future is digital, the current is digital, and always digital takes place when there's so much of data and transactions. And to make it happen, to make it better, is the speed of transaction, the speed in which the data is transferred, the speed in which the results are able to be got. And 5G and more is important now. Many people talk about uh, having the data on the premise, having data on the edge or on the web. So it is important that on the cloud, we need to see which is the best way to keep data. What are the secrecy involved? What are the areas in which we cannot share many of the information? We can share many information. Today, so normally we call uh, quality cost delivery as a as our word, uh, QCD. Now it is changed or uh, QCT, T. T is a time. If we miss the time, we miss the bus. So that's a big, big change happening in our journey towards um, um, being in the top, top three in 2030. So the most important thing is India is a area in which varied uh, things are there, small scale industries. They have old machines, new machines connected. So we have to have an affordable uh, connection between machines, affordable automation, affordable IoT, which is the need of the hour today. So I think it's a very important discussion and um, uh, Shankar, Shankar Vishwanathan is the best person whom we can uh, listen to with his vast experience. I think he'll bring the best out of the entire experience of this. And we look forward for an excellent listening and learning from uh, Shankar San. Thank you very much, Andamori San, for this initiative. Thank you, Rupa, for this organizing. And thanks, Shankar Vishwanathan, for making your time. And uh, we look forward to listen. I think we should also visit uh, Sundaram Clayton, a fantastic uh, 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 company in which a lot of things that you can see in practice in this company. I think thank you very much for your time and looking forward for your lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rupa. Thank you, Chandamoli. Over to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Devarajan, for those kind words. I learned something from you that QCD can become QCT because delivery is only one aspect of the time dimension. And in the recent past, when I'm a beginner in the industry 4.0 learning, I realized how important is a real-time data. So again, the dimension time is coming. So from the journey from 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, Mr. Shankar is going to explain to us how the real-time journey is improving day by day. On that note, I would like to share a couple of slides coming now. Yes, it is seen. I think it's it visible, sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay, welcome all of you. We have more than 20 members already joined. Webinar on digital transformation using the platform of 5G. And a small background. When I contacted Mr. Shankar Vishwanathan, Chief Information Officer or Chief Technology Officer of Sundaram Clayton, my own classmate from NIT Trichy, 1979. And later he had many, many accolades, including IM Bangalore and another leadership program in uh, United States, etc. Is a rich background in the IT and manufacturing domains. Very rare combination of IT and OT, as we call nowadays. People are shy to say manufacturing, it's operation technology. So information technology and manufacturing domains with a clear focus on digital transformation programs. Is a slide visible about Shankar? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. And business technology management, business strategy and planning, global delivery and operations, and software applications, engineering and management. Fantastic profile. And it was a very late in the day I could catch hold of him. He was very, very busy. Last six months, we've been in touch. <clears throat> and finally, before the year ending March, I was able to catch hold of him. He is uh, himself a leader in digital transformation. And he has led significant programs, not only in Sundaram Clayton, but also in many, many other companies in his previous career. In Sundaram Clayton, he did IoT integration, a private 5G infrastructure implementation. Fantastic. 
I never thought 5G is already come into manufacturing. Automation in manufacturing, supply chains. I keep saying that automation and digitalization are the two pillars of industry 4.0. And Shankar has done both. And projects with Fortune 100 companies in banking, insurance, aviation sectors. I hope Shankar can share a few words about the aviation sector experience also today. We have many members in BCAC. Shankar, this talk of yours will go on YouTube. After we record it, we'll take your permission and we put it in the video YouTube. So many who could not join or did not register also will be viewing it in Bangalore Chamber of Commerce YouTube. And he is focused it's viewed on in many several... colleges also. Can you more time? Is viewed Sir? in many colleges in the conference room. Ah, of college students also. You are right. You are right. Many many college students, even though they are watching one screen, one login, there will be hundred students per login. Plus, okay. when you put on the YouTube, many many college and also get benefited out of it. Apart from the eight hundred members of BCIC, cloud adoption, process transformation, fraud detection, or some of the incidental points. Cyber security is now becoming more important day by day. He has worked with several multinational <coughs> IT majors, DXE, Coansys, Sintel, and TVS Motor itself is a multinational today with uh, Devaraj and setting up in Indonesia, Switzerland, England, etc. etc. Tata Motor is truly multinational. He held leadership roles in both India and overseas. <coughs> he has built technology and service delivery partnerships for large global business manage diverse workforce in a matrix environment. We are so lucky to have Shankar Vishwanathan today in the Industry 4.0 platform, which we started in 2018, I think. Today is the sixth year of the journey of Industry 4.0, separate forum in BCIC. Now today, the major objectives is how can manufacturing enterprises leverage private 5G for enhanced digital capabilities. I know 5G has come in ISRO and other government confidential and strategic missions, but even in private manufacturing sector, it has already taken inroads is a great news. And of course, the benefits in adopting private 5G now through a very, very innovative tool called chat GBT. I learned there are at least 10 benefits. I'm not going to elaborate them. Shankar is going to do it and I hope Shankar will touch on many of these points. The key benefits being, as Devarajan mentioned, ultra fast speeds hmm? and very low latency. These two are interrelated, but they are separate points. Latency is a delay in the data and the actual speed is the way it is delivered. The data is delivered. Massive connectivity. That means a large enterprise. Remote monitoring and control. Because you can't do it with 4G is already like a 3G now. So better we go to a good 5G. And I hope 5G will no more be a 4G. You know what I mean? Now AR and VR, which again helps in remote training, remote maintenance, remote service, etc. Edge computing, supply chain optimization, predictive analytics, improved quality control, energy efficiency, to mention a few. Later on, I'll come back with the audience Q&A. I would like to stop sharing and welcome once again Mr. Shankar Viswanathan and request him to do many more webinars in the months to come. We'll invite him almost every once in three months or even more to the BCIC platform on the 4.0. Thank you very much. I hand over mic to Mr. Shankar. He can share the file. Thank you, Shankar. Uh, thank you, Chandramali. Seeing uh, insight uh, and uh, good segue, Dr. Devrajan. Uh, pleasure to interact with you again. Uh, you know, it's a small world. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, today's uh, topic and discussion is primarily based on uh, what uh, I wh we have been uh, going through with. Uh, Shankar, would you, uh, can I request you to come on? Uh... Uh, video also because when we go into the YouTube, it will be very nice to know who exactly is the speaker among the various. I, I have turned the video on. I don't know. Oh, no, no, video is off. If you have a bandwidth problem, you can switch off the video. Um, Not a, no, 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 no. Maybe first 10 minutes we can have the video, then you can bandwidth problem if it comes. Let me. Is the screen visible? 
Okay. It is blank. I am not able to see. It, Rupa is able to see your screen is visible. Okay. And I want to see whether your video is not appearing. Rupa, are you getting? Um, sir, his video is not there. Screen is visible, sir. Screen is visible. So maybe his camera is an issue. Sometimes no, 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 it was it's coming, it. but uh, let me correct, see. Correct, it was coming. Correct, 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 correct. Ah, what happens is if you use the internet uh, browser, then it uh, disconnects a video. Yeah. If you use downloaded downloaded Teams app, then the video comes. I Are just you used your link. So anyway, we'll come back to the video later. OK, no issue, no issue. Thank you. So today's uh, topic is primarily based on experiences that uh, the team and I here have gone through. Of course, I have sanitized to make sure that it is uh, generic and largely uh, this is based on presentations that are given in public forums. So content wise, we have uh, uh, you know, the ability to share because information is at a very generic level. Uh, so confidential information is not been shared here. So let me set a little bit of context, uh, you know, on IG and shared. And this is being shared based on some uh, general perspectives and also experiences. It is truly going to be a foundation for a digital pivot. And digital pivot is where the enterprises have the ability to take stock of the digital transformation program and uh, you know, cast that ability to make a difference in terms of what was described earlier by Dr. Devrajan in terms of time, speed, and uh, you know what uh, Mauli also talked about later in terms of uh, latency and uh, you know the the short bandwidth, so on and so forth. But you know, um, stepping back a little bit, uh, you know there is uh, a question of how this whole thing has evolved. And uh, we, in, in, at least in from an Indian context, 2022 was when uh, you know the public uh, 5G spectrum was made available through the auctions, and pretty much soon after, private 5G licenses were given. Started uh, sometime in late 2022, so that was a turning point for the evolution of this uh, capability in this country. And my uh, presentation today is really to take you through the journey and uh, how should enterprises plan around this, take advantage of what is being made available uh, from a public facility standpoint and see how it can be leveraged for your own organizations. Uh, Molly talked a little bit about uh, you know, 1G and 2G. Uh, it, it's, and I will come to that in a couple of minutes. I have. Uh, uh, slide on that. So, so combining the uh, opportunity for a digital pivot and also an enterprise's perspective on how to envision it, how to look at the demand and take a look at the approach. Uh, this is what the evolution looks like, right? In the 90s, it was all wired uh, networking. In this time in 2004-2005, we had high uh, capacity Wi-Fi that came in. And in between, we had the 1G and the 2G. 1G was in the 80s, which really delivered analog voice. 2G networking capability in the 90s gave uh, digital voice. 3G came in in early 2000s and deli started delivering mobile data. And 4G, a private LG, uh, private LTE came in 2010 and was uh, able to deliver mobile data. But you know, if you look at the third. Uh, or rather the fourth uh, the 4G, private LTE 4G was able to give you some level of security. So it was scalable, seamless. It had a limited, uh, you know, <coughs> area in which it could uh, communicate high density in terms of the number of devices you could uh, add on to it. And there was a reasonable response and uh, in terms of speed and bandwidth, latency was 30 milliseconds. But it also had its limitations, right? You could put in a for private uh, network, but you know the range and you know the interference that uh, you could one had to deal with was also a challenge. Private 5G uh, or 5G bandwidth or private 5G started coming in in 2022 onwards, and here the speeds that you could achieve, which is uh, uh, 
10 Gbps or more and uh, latency of 5 milliseconds with the level of uh, huge level of security that it offered was a perfect platform for uh, taking into consideration any digital transformation program one considered. This is, uh, you know, really a turning point in infrastructure in the manufacturing sector. And uh, as we speak, there are a lot of uh, organizations in the West that have adopted it, but uh, in India, I think it is coming of age. People are talking about it. People are experimenting. Uh, we did an exp uh, we went through a full-fledged pilot uh, last year and uh, figured out how to use it in our new investments that are coming in, uh, new plants that are coming in. Uh, so Wi-Fi G, right? The question is, yeah, Spectrum was available. It has robust security standards. It is able to provide a seamless connected platform for industrial and communication use cases. So it all at the end of the day, 5G uh, usability in manufacturing is all about the use cases that you can define and come up with. The passive components, which is your, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> network cables or routers, which is whatever are uh, defined as passive components in networking, it requires very low maintenance. Latency is very good, speeds, we talked about it. Uh, typically, private 5G in this country operates on 3.5 gigahertz band. Uh, this is also called the millimeter wave. Typically, 5G is made available in uh, below the 6, 6 gigahertz spectrum, uh, which is it's called the millimeter wave. And this allows for speed, security and high density of devices. So clusters of devices can be connected. If you look at enterprises today in networking, what are the challenges uh, in connecting uh, machines in your uh, shop floor? A lot of physical cabling needed, a lot of resources needed to monitor and maintain. If you change the layout of any of your machines, then you have to necessarily go around tinkering with the cabling uh, sometimes relaying of cables, sometimes maintenance. Scalability uh, is a challenge. If you have to add new lines to your shop floor, you have to additionally plan for uh, the network security devices, route those cables. And maintaining the fiber or ethernet requires a lot of uh, resources and something drops, you miss that connectivity spot. And this is just about static machines where, uh, I mean, static locations where uh, the communication is one way, right? You typically use it for pulling data out of machines. But if you were to do two-way communication uh, as in uh, robots or things like that, then these issues become even more uh, significant. And obviously, there are challenges with reference to maintenance, the redundancy available in case something goes down. Wireless coverage is an issue because of interference with, uh, you know, these large machines. They can absorb or bounce signals in unexpected ways. There are Faraday zones that one has to factor. And uh, if you have to prioritize traffic uh, into certain devices, especially for two-way communication, as, as in an example, you want to send command signals to your uh, controllers uh, or programs into a line, then the quality of service to prioritize the data becomes an issue in today's uh, static environments. So these are some of the challenges in uh, that are seen in manufacturing establishments as networking becomes very significant in one day or uh, depending on, even it is a non-networked organization, these challenges don't exist, but with today's level of digital uh, transformation, automation, connectivity that is in place, these are becoming critical. So what is private 5G? I'll just skip through this a little bit because uh, there's a lot of public, uh, publicly available and shared information, but it is essentially uh, the spectrum that the government made available for telcos to operate uh, and in a public uh, and private domains enable the, the telcos to offer it to private enterprises to provide the connectivity platform. IoT devices require very 
low latency, very quick responses. And therefore, uh, this uh, availability of the bandwidth, along with uh, you know the radio infrastructure like RAN devices and core devices, enabled uh, the availability of a platform that is ready-made to uh, do the connectivity. Uh, private 5G works similar to a public 5G, but the endpoints, which is your machine and uh, any other devices that you connect, have to be cellular capable, which means essentially they have they should have the ability to communicate with uh, with each other or communicate to a central command center through SIMs. And these are called uh, these are private SIMs which get embedded only into the network. It will not be uh, recognized outside the network. So it is very much like your mobile handset that switches from cell to cell. But uh, the difference being that it will work only inside the factory or where the private 5G network is designed with uh, uh, specific latitude, longitude uh, coordinates. So it is geo-fenced. Uh, in, in uh, when the uh, came, when the ray, telco operator assigns the spectrum uh, to to an enterprise, it is tagged only for that location. So it cannot work outside that location. So it also gives a greater degree of security because nothing can come in, nothing can go out. So that is uh, uh, you know uh, one of the key factors. And obviously, in terms of density, coverage, and uh, range that uh, a private 5G network offers, it is far, far superior to uh, 4G LTE networks or even Wi-Fi 6 networks. So at the end of the day, how do, should an enterprise look at it? It is always a business-first approach, right? Business imperatives is what would drive adoption of 5G, right? Improved productivity, improved quality. And I would add, uh, next time I present this, I will add Dr. Devrajan's uh, comment on time. Uh, obviously, safer factory and reduced uh, uh, price performance of operations, reduction in manufacturing cost, improved quality, all the good things that we hear about. But business imperatives are what to drive an adoption. So for that, you know, the digitization has come in in a big way, right? We have uh, organizations adopting to advanced robotics, uh, remote management. Mowgli already spoke a little bit about that condition-based monitoring, smart surveillance, uh, <coughs> OT connectivity, IoT, machine vision. Uh, and there are a lot more digitization use cases that come into play when we talk about the business-first approach, right? And that stems from industry 4.0 where there are uh, iot sensorizations amrs that come in bots that are coming uh, <coughs> digital twins immersive reality and video experiences these are today some of the buzzwords in digital uh, digital transformation that we uh, experience with but at the end of the day all this can be enabled through you know an omnipresent coverage which means coverage across all your operating areas without any drops, no black zones. You consistently low latency, high availability, mobility across zones in a seamless man manner. And to top it all, security is a big issue today. So providing that enhanced level of security at all times, uh, you know, at a level uh, which prevents or you know reduces the threat of outside uh, vulnerabilities is going to be very very critical and this is enabled by a 5g platform these were a lot of our considerations when we looked at uh, uh, bringing in 5g into the uh, into the factories that we are working with and obviously you know if you look at it from a global perspective uh, it is predicted that by 2030, 30 to 35 billion dollars will be the private 5G market, just the networking components. And adoption is going to be uh, critical in the manufacturing sectors followed by automotive. So between automotive and manufacturing, 
we are going to cover uh, lion share of uh, private 5G adoption. This is separate from uh, businesses that would use a public 5G network. So just trying to make that distinction very clearly. So what drives an enterprise towards uh, adopting 5G for their connected factory journey, right? The primary mantra is to go digital, have seamless and secure connectivity, real-time operational insights covering man, material, and machines. One of the added advantages is that a platform like 5G gives you is uh, the ability to have uh, high level of detailing in uh, video surveillance. Whether you want to put in a video camera for your uh, monitoring the output from your machines for quality inspection or for safety or for zoning, uh, whatever it is, the, the high resolution and throughput that is available uh, gives it a terrific engine to do video analytics. And therefore, a lot of the use cases are going to be triggered by the ability to collect information from high resolution cameras and process them at high speeds. And we talked a bit about optimization through Industry 4.0. The standard uh, platforms for Industry 4.0 apply, uh, but because you are having operating in a low latency environment, the opportunity to do optimization on a real-time basis uh, goes up significantly. And then, of course, uh, cybersecurity is consistent across IT and OT networks. These are typically segregated in uh, new businesses, but uh, IG provides a seamless layer on top of it to do that. Digital transformation journey will, uh, uh, you know, pre-IoT, this is a short comparison. There's no machine connectivity. It's completely connected factory. We typically have equipment of different vintage, but here in uh, in a 5G connected environment, you have machine data, building data, ESG data, and everything else can be integrated. And also material movement, uh, warehouse data, all that gets integrated into a common platform. Uh, Pre-IoT needed sensorization to collect critical information in a new environment that continues to be there, but you can create an integrated command center for operational monitoring. Network maintainability, multi-location operations in pre-IoT, yeah, several manual touch points and cyber security resilience was always a risk. In a newer environment, as I talked about video surveillance, robust cyber security and use cases to support lean manufacturing. These are some of the touch points. OK, so. I, I will go into, you know, what we set out to accomplish. Challenging OT environment that covers more than 500,000 square feet. A uh, network has to deliver uh, a measured level of interference uh, at 10 dB, despite having uh, huge metallic structures, right? So if you were to put in a Wi-Fi wi in, in one of the segments of the plant, we computed that uh, we had to put at least uh, 15 to 20 Wi-Fi routers, uh, and any device that talked had to go through these routers, so you had to erect them. The signal interference would be very high, depending on where the uh, you know the routers were mounted. And every time a router or access point got into a problem, one had to bring in a huge crane or ladder, go up and remove it. In an operating factory, that is very very difficult. And constant throughput between 300 to 400 Mbps. The network that we have designed can deliver up to 10 gigabits per second, but given all the devices that are uh, connected, the density that is connected, uh, 300 to 400 Mbps is pretty good, and that is what your uh, mobile networks today deliver to your phone. So that is a response, right, with your WhatsApp for calling or YouTube. That is the speed that you would get inside the plant. And then, uh, you know, Connecting OT machines about 1200 plus. There's a small typo here. Uh, we are also bringing in uh, uh, robotic material movement, robots for material movement, and these have to move in a very seamless fashion. They cannot 
stop or uh, you know breakdown in between the network strength has to be very high so we have worked with the uh, material robo manufacturers to actually inbuild the sims into the robos to make sure that they can talk in a seamless manner um, immersive experiences we talk, talked about and there are several other use cases we will go about uh, talking about So essentially, we are futurizing for the right business impact using uh, on reality, virtual reality, audio, uh, AR, VR for better value adds, better price performance, include, improved employee experience, enabling video voice calling across the plant. So one of the use cases that we are contemplating is uh, we are still trying out and seeing how it will work, but. Uh, you know, personal devices that can talk to each other across the plant with, uh, uh, you know, the personal carrying these handsets that are connected uh, internally to each other. We can use Teams or any other platform for voice video calling inside the plant, and there will be no external mobile connectivity to, therefore, giving you a layer of security so that, uh, you know, any threat of people sharing pictures or whatever outside the plant will not happen. So there are a lot of uh, such benefits that are being thought about. So productivity can go up, communication internally for alerts, for uh, uh, you know trends or uh, any data that an operator or a supervisor needs can be provided to his handset in a very secure manner. Uh, we talked about surveillance uh, for zoning, for safety, for material uh, movement identification. There are a lot of such uses that have real-time 5G enabled cameras that can come in. Uh, autonomous mobile robots for material movement and of course OT machine telemetry over the air. Uh, some of these are already tested and are in place in our uh, another plant of ours. So we have seen some of these things working very well in a very stable manner. Typically, um, you know, the characteristics and the use cases that we have uh, operationalized or tested include the high density uh, machines in, over their telemetry, then uh, low power IoT sensors, uh, those have been tested. It will, and I've given you a comparison between 5G and Wi-Fi 6. Uh, autonomous vehicles which require uh, reliability and latency over a uh, set path. Uh, the earlier days they used to have uh, magnetic strips, but in today's technology we don't need those. So you just need to put punch in the geo the coordinates and define the path once or twice to, to the autonomous robots and then they can move up and down that set path looking for uh, interferences over a period of time. Then uh, <clears throat> video control, 5G video is operational. We have tested that AR, VR for remote locations, again for maintenance, hand holding from a central knowledge resource center. Those have been tested. Voice over IP, been, we have tested it. We'll be implementing wherever it shows tested. Uh, but not operation. These will get implemented uh, very soon. We are on the trajectory to Im implement those. Mobile phone uh, connectivity we have talked. In Indo connectivity for IT devices and other devices also tested and some operational. Uh, 5G will not operate uh, with an outdoor connectivity. So outside a uh, set area, a set geo location, this will not work. So it is not in scope at all. Moving forward, uh, you know, typically, how does an enterprise look at uh, 5G? There are six questions right here. Does an enterprise really need this network infrastructure? It's the very big question will be written on investment. As the technology is new, how do we address the unknowns? Will legacy OT be able to talk to the modern 5G network? Is it recognized and how private is your uh, network? And last but not the least, these are operations. These are typically six questions that uh, we think our enterprises will be interested in uh, understanding. So I have tried to answer some of these here. Uh, you know, 
because an enterprise need the infrastructure it's like it's like laying a road right you won't know the traffic unless you lay the road and once you have this platform your ability to onboard use cases is immense it is huge because you already have a platform it becomes easy but the decision to have a 5g network or not lies primarily with the organization driven by business imperatives i want to call out here that it is a lot easier to uh, put this into a greenfield uh, plant than into retrofitting an existing plant uh, ex retrofitting an existing plant has huge challenges with layout with inbuilt uh, uh, infrastructure with so many other issues but if you have a green 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 field plant you can do exactly the way you want it we uh, consider from a roi and everything else perspective the big uh, the big question therefore is uh, designing the network uh, in the new factory that we are consider we are constructing there will be we took a call there will be no internal cabling excepting for the uh, fiber backbone uh, so you know that is a big big change right so everything is going to be wireless every bit of machinery is going to talk to uh, the central command center to the servers to each other through wireless mechanism so that's a big uh, change but you can do it in a greenfield plant you can't do it in a brownfield plant so some of the design considerations it has to the network has to be robust uh low latency ability to take on high density of devices there has to be a lot of uh, redundancy built in so we, these are some of the design factors uh, that we considered uh use cases will be dynamic some are already in place some will evolve uh communication video meetings uh, quality 4.0 use cases there are so many of them that will come in uh and when you build a network you future proof it for at least for the next 5 years in terms of designing the traffic network segregation uh, plan in alignment with your manufacturing to understand how the layouts are going to be what is the flow going to be and then accordingly position the uh, you know the radios and uh, the the network capabilities ideally recommend that it is being done in a phased manner to uh, go ahead in implementing the big question is roi the use cases will drive the roi right you know this is again an individual uh, foresight that the management uh, has to take it is really a business call but some of the business use cases that we have envisaged over a period of time will you know there are at least uh, 20 530 use cases here but there are a lot more right from <clears throat> you know the very basic iot analytics quality systems asset tracking ar vr material handling warehouse management to energy management water waste management scrap yard management uh, you know the lights smoke and fire protection i mean there's a whole bunch of business use cases that are going to individually generate the benefits and the aggregate of this is what is going to give you the payback in terms of taking a call uh, the list is pretty huge there is a cost associated with onboarding all of these uh, so it has to be done in a phased manner but uh, initially it is like as i said building a highway and uh, you know watching the traffic come on it to uh, you know see how the utilization takes place and this is across different domains whether it is machines building management system people movement material movement warehouse management safety so on and so forth all these talk through the network layer um, we we talked about uh, some of this but i'll again call out real time monitoring and control of process parameters through iot which is typically what the digital transformation programs will give you uh, assist in managing availability of productivity quality maintenance iot we we are, most of us are familiar with what it can do to uh, with the data uh, all of it 
is pretty standard, but this and more with coupled with video analytics is where uh, next and uh, material movement, you are able to integrate a lot of these use cases into one single large use case. As an example, if you put an AMR uh, with safety uh, overlay, then it can determine that the material can be moved in uh, at a certain time from a certain location with uh, the safety checkpoints and create alarms so that whole communication um, stream can be integrated. Beyond that, it, you have the ability to, to establish a single source of data, uh, operation, manage the operations through insights, adoption of uh, digitally monitored process meeting customer mandates that come in periodically, and then build a data lake to pull in as much information uh, as you can. Both structured and unstructured data can be brought in for analytics through your uh, data lakes. How do we address unknowns given technology is new? Uh, so our own experience here is we tested the technology in another plant. We tested individual use cases and made sure that the communication protocols and our outcomes were uh, to our expectation. Um, based on that only we took the next step. So that whole journey took about six months in terms of building the network, understanding how 5G operates, how the network segregation needs to take place. <coughs> you need to have a very strong partner ecosystem. Uh, businesses today are, uh, you know, their primary bread and butter is to build their own products, you know, not experiment in 5G. So, this expertise has to be brought in and managed managed by the business, but uh, you need to leverage partners to bring in uh, the expertise. So there will be a telco partner, system integration partner, and all your uh, IT, OT, and other partners need to understand this technology and work in tandem. You have to design considerations in terms of uh, how big an area you want to cover. We, as I said, we are uh, covering quite a huge uh, sized plant and uh, you know we have to figure out how the layout matches with uh, the connectivity black spots faraday zones so on and so forth and what interference levels we want and uh, the you know the recommended approach is to go with a phased manner rather than a big bang approach because uh, you, you need to onboard use cases make sure that you see the value in it before taking the next step so these were some of our own uh, journey experiences. Business alignment, again, use cases, ROI is important. Use case prioritization is important. And uh, Greenfield versus Brownfield, I already talked about that. Some use cases work very well in a Brownfield plan, but everything works great in a Greenfield. Technology recommendation. You know, not all, again, in our personal approach, we did not recommend, uh, as an example, 5G inside the office area, though it works. Uh, we stuck to using 5G only in the plant and operations area where it is uh, the response, uh, <clears throat> latency, bandwidth are all very, very important. Density of devices is very important. In an office area, uh, Wi-Fi will be perfectly fine because accounting and purchase and all that they are it's good enough if you you provide a wi-fi 6 uh, and network environment so we end up having a hybrid environment uh, 5g in the main operations area and uh, uh, you know a cheaper alternative in wi-fi 6 in the other areas so this is again a call that the business has to take Uh, there are a lot of risk considerations that come in when you do this uh, questions. Uh, <clears throat> essentially, you know, I talked about it earlier. Objective is for the digital transformation of the factory to generate uh, industry 4.0 use cases to reduce OPEX and increase efficiency and reduce dependency on traditional connectivity. Broad scope will be network planning, IT integration, OT connectivity, IT convergence, and uh, you know industry use case 4.0 use case enablement. 
you need to create experimental networks, do your proof of technology, and also bring in the skill. And there are a lot of pilot use cases that you deal with. Very important to have a partner ecosystem that uh, I just talked about, a telco partner and solution owner, SI partner, radio partner, core partner. Sometimes some of these roll into a single partner, but these are very characteristically different set of uh, variables. Then, uh, you know, when you do, a, if you're building a greenfield plant, then there are several other aspects of it that uh, come into play. So our approach was we took a 5G powered uh, shop floor. I just talked about it and Wi-Fi for IT assets. Uh, perimeter security is wired. We do uh, on-prem data center for first level of data gathering uh, and also to collect the video feeds to provide the video analytics. Uh, passive network components, industry for use cases, and you know, all done in a phased manner. So OT connectivity has to question of managing legacy conditions and more. And here we talk about 1200 machines, 40 plus AMR, CSRS, BMS facilities. In our case, it has to be ruggedized for a very high temperature uh, uh, operating environments, potentially dust and so on and so forth. Solution is ruggedized for a small cell uh, operation, very much like your cellular towers, uh, to suit movement and also to suit the responses and uh, the bridge between IT and OT connectivity. This is something that we also factored in the design out of the six consideration. So how private is your private network security and segregation? Spectrum uh, that the telco provides is for a specific latitude longitude so you cannot work outside that nobody can enter into that spectrum zone nobody can uh, push data out to any other zone so everything is secure at a very very significant level from an architecture perspective we had uh, the core the core in a 5g is your first level of uh, layering that provides the data it's on premise uh, with uh, radios and devices in campus and SIMs are, uh, that is SIM cards provision for non-public uh, use. It cannot access uh, public network. Internet connectivity through enterprise uh, firewall. So after the core, we have the enterprise firewall, which uh, makes sure that uh, any threats are protected there. And then uh, there are several other layers below that for security at the individual machine level uh, and uh, above it to ensure security. So the security that um, this can provide is going to be at the highest level uh, potentially, and especially significant for a OT environment. IT security is pretty much standard these days. Uh, you know, everybody, uh, there are well established protocols, but OT security is evolving. So this is going to be very significant. And last but not the least, uh, you know, it, there is an ecosystem that needs to be managed. There are endpoints, application use cases, IoT gateways, private network and network elements that need to be managed. So network operating center, security operating center, centralized governance, all these are additional uh, requirements that will kick in, whether you do it on your own or you bring in a third party. But as technology evolves, Managing the technology also has to evolve uh, along with it. So enterprises need to be cognizant of that. And this is a, a little bit on the reference architecture. Uh, you know, from the endpoints in the left most side of the screen, as you see it, uh, you know, this is from where the data really gets pushed into the communication radios to the connectivity backbone, which is a uh, fiber LAN, and then to the core, which talks through the spectrum. This is how the whole reference architecture has been done. And uh, we, you know, some we have a hybrid environment where some of the machines don't even have data handling capabilities. 
and then how do you put in a SIM card? So there are CPE gateways, customer point, uh, uh, you know, gateways that we, uh, customer place gateways, this is called, wherein you actually uh, pull in an Ethernet cable into the CPE and push uh, a SIM on the other side so that it can talk wirelessly. And that is what we have uh, experimented with. Uh, these are very specialized devices which can uh, support the data flow between uh, your machines on the shop floor and uh, uh, making it wireless with a SIM card. Uh, and it, it can do bidirectional telemetry, which means it can also be used to receive those signals uh, from the other side. We talked quite a bit about these. So key takeaways, it's a business call. Private 5G is not just a technology call. But definitely it is going to be the foundation for the next wave of transformation. Uh, companies that adopt it will have the ability to you know, give that platform that is needed for uh, high density of devices, sophistication in use cases, and and the ability to take quick decisions. Decision, as I talked earlier, greenfield plants, it is a lot easier to do because you build the whole infrastructure ground up. Brownfields are going to be challenging, but if the ROIs are good, it, it can make good sense. Uh, to embrace the technology challenges, you recommend that you go through a POC proof of concept or technology and then model the ROI and then have the right partner ecosystem. These are uh, some of the considerations as we go into it. That's all I had. Thank Back you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very enriching, very brief, very crisp. Totally went above my head. I'm sure others are <laughs> understanding better than me. What I could see is a walking Library of 5G is talking, namely Mr. Shankar Vishwanathan. Sir, can you please unshare your? Uh, we are yeah. seeing your screen still. Ah, exactly. That is. The and uh, you are also able to come on video now. Now that the let PPT me, has gone. Let me see that. Uh, Normally, it allows you to bring the video if it is not in the PPT mode. Let me see that. Because some questions will be asked. Some questions have come. Also in a YouTube, it comes out well when there is a video. Let me see. Are you able to see me? Uh, it was in the, in the beginning of our, uh, when you joined the webinar, your video came. I don't know. Now see, they seem to be playing some tricks. So yeah. hmm. we only have a blank screen. Maybe, maybe you have to just clean the camera there. Um, sometime, you know, a new laptop has got a small sticker. You want to remove the sticker. It happened. No, it happened. Uh, let me see. Let me just blur. My laptop, it happened. Um, but don't log out. It's difficult to no, log no, in. No, no, I'm not logging out. I don't want to log out. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, many questions are expected. Three questions have come from one Mr. Jimmy Francis. I will read out if it is not visible to others. Shankar, can I go ahead with questions? Yeah, yes, please. Yes, please. Um, question number one. After six years, the market will be 35 billion. What will it be 15 years ahead? See, I understand I think, the question. Yeah, so let me try to answer Okay. Typically, the technology has changed every 10 Little years. Louder, please. Louder, please. Mm, hold on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. So, typically, signal is cracking. Less than 30 years. So, I. And as we speak, while 5G is in the market, there is experimental 6G coming in. So we do not know. 
you are your thing i can tell you your signal is cracking shankar i'm sorry let me see whether we have to do this is it okay is it better yeah it keeps going okay continue no i'm saying uh, <clears throat> market is uh, we we it's Why only I am hearing the noise or no? Even I am hearing the disturbance. Sir. Ah, so some yeah, problem with the speaker side. Some other disturbance, I think. Let me just mute. I unmute. I muted and unmuted. Did you still continue to receive the noise or? Uh, no, it comes. Uh, no, during your webinar, it was not there. Now it is coming. Maybe somebody else's mic then. Ah, uh, maybe somebody else's mic. Rupa, you can switch off the mic. I will also switch off the mic. Let us see. No, it is your mic only, Shankar. My mic is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All others are switched off. Hold on. Some, some loose yeah. connection. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So, do you have yeah. any two devices logged in, sir? In parallel? No, 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 Mr. not Shankar. me. No, 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 not me. I okay. have only one device. No, no, Shankar name doesn't appear again. No, only one device. It was very smooth during the webinar. Now only it is happening. Okay. Oh, again, Raki. Let. Your fan, is your fan fan is on maybe you can switch off the fan i have because switched off everything I have it, it is off some kind of a drumming some kind of a drumming is coming uh, nothing from my side uh, mauli okay go ahead now seem to be okay so it's going to be difficult to predict what the market is going to be looking like okay uh, because the dimensions in which the value is going to be looked at is different. It is not going to be a linear growth. Uh, there will be a change in composition. We are going to get 6G. There will be going to be a lot more integration and uh, uh, with uh, you know EVs coming in, a lot more technology that is going to be coming in. Uh, I think the market will only grow in an exponential manner. What the number is going to be, I do not know. I can't predict for 15 years, but it will it will scale up. No one can do the crystal ball glazing is what glazing yeah. is the point. Yeah. Yeah. Second question from same gentleman. In manufacturing, will 5G enable a bearing noise and temperature and arrange for replacement or even change over to standby machine? Maybe he's alluding to the predictive maintenance benefits. Maybe yeah. It depends on how your IoT network is designed. If you have the alerts coming in after through your sensor, I oh, your drum is back again. Uh, not not from my side. There's nothing, no noise here. I... One thing. Let me try and switch the network. Uh, if you are okay with that. Yes, please. You can switch off the network. Change the network. I, I log out and log in. Just give me a minute. I log yeah, sure, out and sure. log in. If you can log in through the Teams app, your video will come.
Can you see me now? No, you are still blank. If you've gone through browser, MS Teams doesn't permit the video. MS Teams is a very funny app. Unlike Zoom, it plays games. But is the noise? The noise gone? Noise is not there. Okay. So we'll live with this. Okay. So there is another question which I think we will skip it. Um, something to do with uh, more like a futuristic question. Um, yeah, go ahead. There are no other text questions. If anybody wants to ask questions, uh, Rupa, are they, are they able to open their audio or you'll permit them to open the audio? Yes, sir. Their audio is enabled. So uh, they can raise the hand. There is a click. There is a hand signal. We will have a hot stop at 2, 12.30. So if somebody can raise the hand, there is a hand symbol, and that person can ask question directly also. Okay, let me initiate with my own question. Shankar, uh, we hear about industry 4.0. Uh, very coincidentally, we have a 4G now. Now you are launching 5G. Many of the parameters that you mentioned also going to promote the human machine interface in an aggressive way. So can we say 5G is also going to enable industry 5.0? Looks like academic question, but you can throw some light on it. I, I would think so, Molly, because uh, we are moving into the next dimension where you are going to integrate today today's industry 4.0 was primarily about getting data from machines and analyzing it right primarily but right. here yeah. you are able to with uh, 5g's uh, uh, you know the lay, the high speed low latency and high bandwidth you are able to integrate a lot of video information into the 4.0 flat platform and you can evolve a lot of manufacturing uh, use cases. As I said, one is, of course, quality, visual quality inspections uh, using automated uh, scanners or cameras. You can monitor uh, production base uh, remotely. You can look at uh, operator training uh, or operator uh, movement. There's a lot of safety movement, material movement with uh, video instructions coming in video based instructions coming in i think it does provide the segue for the next wave of uh, that is what i would think for sure that's a very good uh, point you made uh, before i come to mr saju's question a follow up question from my side is you know the typical industry 4.0 maturity moves from computerization visualization and so on and so forth and then the, the point about prediction and prescription and a self adjusting model of what we call the future factory is impossible with the current speeds and current latency of even 4G. So perhaps 5G and 6G will really move the goals of industry 4.0 to the, the fourth and fifth targets, namely prediction and prescription and actuating the systems as it were, and not just doing a data analysis and diagnosis. Up to diagnosis, we have some people are successful now in the adoption with the 4G kind of speeds. And maybe 5G speed will enable us to move to the next level of the maturity grid. It's just my thought process. Yeah, I see speed is definitely there, but that speed allows you to build use cases which individual industries need to uh, think through and uh, you know <clears throat> emulate or rather uh, invest and evolve the thing is the, the speeds at which for instance you can link uh, energy uh, with to your your energy consumption to your uh, shop floor uh, productivity you can spot which uh, cells or which machines are going abnormal in terms of energy consumption and have an alert to prevent uh, or to take corrective action, whatever it is, right? That's one thing. Uh, the the real-time ability is where 
the differentiation is going to come in. For us, the biggest uh, advantage is going to be in material movement uh, because we are uh, going to minimize the dependence on uh, contract labor or whatever to move material inside the plant. Uh, that is going to be automated, right? So there is a different uh, demand and the or demand different business case that is coming in for us. Uh, That's uh, a fantastic. Which means the linking the AMR to the Kanban, where from the stores to the warehouse, everything is in a pull system. Exactly. And uh, with the AMRs, you, you mentioned about 40 AMRs in that plant with 1,500 yeah. machines. I can visualize that how the just-in-time environment is really enabled through the 5G is a fantastic case study. And maybe with the help of Bangalore Chamber of Commerce, later on, I will request for a physical visit to Sundaram Clayton um, and TBS Motor, if you already done 5G, both are in the same uh, group of uh, board of directors. So if it is done only at Chennai, uh, then we would uh, make a bus load of people from Bangalore to come there. But if it is there in Hosur with uh, Mr. Devrajan, then we can also see it in implementation um, yeah. on the shop floor of TBS Motor. We, we will talk offline about it yeah but more than well yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll have to plan it understand, understand. of course there's be a lot of permission and all yeah, yeah. coming no, uh, timing timing is the issue but we yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. We, do we, do we have to plan it three months ahead of time of course yeah, yeah, yeah. and For so sure. i request mr saju to unmute himself or rupa can aid it after that there are some questions from mr Srinath and rakesh kumar over no, to I mr saju can you hear me, sir? I have unmuted. Yes, sir. Saju, I can hear you. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I also thank you, Shankar, sir, for the very insightful presentation. So one thing I wanted to uh, ask is because whenever we are changing the network topology or, or the systems, uh, there's a huge cost involved in uh, the infra also. For example, when we tried to, uh, we, were, we were exploring whether the speed of the network switch can be increased from 1 Gbps to 10 Gbps. So it was a huge task to be done. So I would like to know about your experiences when you change from 4G to 5G or or a different uh, network methodology. The cost part and the and the difficulty because we are talking about 1,500 machines here. So a lot many connections are there. Uh, so how how you could manage it? Yeah. So the thing is, this is currently uh, uh, underway, right? So we what we did is we had a, another site in which we did the experimentation to see whether the basic connectivity works or not. Uh, there is going to be a cost, but if you are, as I mentioned repeatedly, if you're doing a greenfield plant, then the cost is baked in. But if you already have a plant that is wired and has a specific network topology baked in, changeover is an additional expense for which your ROI has to be uh, justifiable, right? You, if something is working and then you want to put something better, uh, your return should also be equally there. So it is an individual business case. As I mentioned again, it's a business that will drive this transformation and not technology alone. So if there is a business case uh, that drives it, then yeah, you can justify it. But if something is working well in 4G, wait until the appropriate time. That is the guidance. It is not a magic mantra at this point. But if you're building a new plant, this is the way to go. Okay, thank you, sir. Molly, sir, you are on mute. Thank you, Mr. Saju. He is the head of the digital manufacturing uh, project of ABB, and uh, he is doing a fantastic job in in our Industry 4.0 committee also. Thank you, Mr. Saju. Now, okay. next question is from Mr. Uh, Srinath. Um, Srinath, I don't know whether you can unmute and ask. By the way, his question is, is the input of data collection manual from the machine shops with the CNC and conventional machinery mix? It, it uh, depends on the your level of uh, sensorization and uh, automation and collecting data. For us, it is hybrid, but uh, eventually it will be fully automated. I think what Srinath probably mentioned is uh, is a classic thing which we have in MSME challenges. Is there many, many what we call the legacy machines which doesn't have even CNC controls? Yeah. 
so that's an independent subject mr shrinath so unless and until the the things are activated uh, there is no point in talking about data collection from the the dummy things which do not have any um, connectivity through sensors and other network issues so there that's is a, a fundamental cost. issue there is a cost uh, that will be associated with it if your data collection cost through an automation justifies uh, converting a dumb machine Correct. to a intelligent we can do that otherwise uh, you know you have to just leave it at that absolutely and uh, okay so mr rakesh kumar says is this 5g presentation relevant to implementing uh special purpose machines and robotic cells customized requirements i'm just rephrasing his sentence uh, can you can you repeat that molly the presentation on 5g what you did now is it relevant to implementing special purpose machines robotic cells in building customer specific requirements i definitely definitely and more you know the, the question is uh, if if you are uh, you know your cells are uh, you know robotic cells and you need two way telemetry machine telemetry to be uh, between the command center and the machine uh, 5g platform can handle that much better than anything else i hope so, yes, answer is yes Answer Rakesh yes. Kumar, the answer is yes. So he asked a simple question. I wish he had asked a open-ended question. Um, Mr. Karthik is asking, "May I know will you be training IT admin on the same technology?" Thanks in advance. I don't know that. That is not for me to say, right? <laughs> okay, I will indulge in it uh, in a brief way. that any change management mr karthik requires training at various levels and various functions of the organization of which it is a subset but needless to mention that without training nobody can migrate from one level to another level be it a 5g 4g 5g technology or 3.0 to 4.0 or manual to robotics whatever it is so any technology change must have champions who are trained adequately to sustain the initial efforts done by experts the the you the can have any number of outside outsourcing of experts i have seen hundreds of adaptation in this country suffering due to initial success by external experts but thereafter not at all monitored by internal experts being absent so that's a million dollar point that we have to address anyway now mr Jimmy Francis I think his hand went up Jimmy Francis from Abu Dhabi I think go ahead sir with your question hi team can you all hear me yes little louder you are very very far so it should be little louder hello all of you can you hear me yeah yes mr francis thanks a lot i really appreciate uh, you are bringing down very high technology to a very low level like people like me really appreciate that that is awesome uh, my question is uh, about for example airlines fields or many the, the manufacturing fields is the private 5g uh, is already in line with many companies are many companies already adapting that uh, do we have, do we know uh, how many are in line and uh, what is going to be the future thank so you so i i can uh, talk to you about uh, some of the use cases that are being discussed especially in airline industry now if you take a typical uh, airline operation at the terminal uh, you know there is there is a lot of uh, communication that is needed when the aircraft gets dispatched right so there is cargo loading there is fuel loading there is uh, passenger loading the readiness the air checks and all that today all these take time but uh, i do know that in uh, singapore uh, singapore airlines there is an experiment going on where they have brought in uh, a 5g network uh, 5g enablement private 5g enablement at the gate so when the aircraft comes in for uh, 
to park uh, or is getting ready for onboarding, a lot of the data communication uh, between the control center of the, that is a control center of the airline and the ATC and the aircraft uh, loading point, all this are happening through private 5G uh, enablement. So that when it is secure to it is uh, also the time taken is uh, minimized in terms of transacting and the ability to bring in different uh, actors or you know different agencies into a single platform for coordinated uh, communication. Uh, they are working on it. They I do not know whether it has been made live, but I do know that uh, there were uh, pilots that were going on to make it work. So. Catering is one, fuel loading is one, maintenance is another, uh, air charting or uh, route planning is another, uh, passenger loading. I mean, there are multiple agencies involved in getting an aircraft uh, up and up into the air, right? So that pre-flight activities coming back from a single gate uh, through the gate is where the coordination is coming in in a, a very uh, cohesive manner. Now, I do not know whether they have operationalized it. So I, I guess they would have and many other airlines will follow suit. Thank you, Mr. Shankar, for a very <clears throat> good use case illustration of Aerol Airline. I'm sure there are many manufacturing firms globally as well as in India are looking at this 5G very carefully because unlike the Volas and the Zomatos, we require a very high speed and very low latency in the manufacturing subsystem, especially OEMs and tier one companies will lap it up very soon. And I wish Shankar all the best to spread the message as a champion across this country. Now there is a question from Mr. Shiva Kumar. I think he's from aerospace company. He's asking, could you explain what all use cases of digital twin application can be considered for aerospace component manufacturing company? Not the complete aircraft, but only component manufacture. See, uh, from what I can envision, uh, air, aerospace component manufacturing is no different from an engineering component or automotive component manufacturing, excepting there is a precision uh, that is involved uh, to meet different standards. That is my understanding. But if you step above that, uh, a digital twin from the start of, uh, you know, how you visualize the flow to capturing the machine parameters to see which machines are operating at what uh, parameters they have to operate. Uh, you know, the composition of uh, materials that are going in, if you have the ability to track it. I think for every stage, you can design those uh, components and integrate it. The platform can provide you uh, irrespective of the nature of the industry, it is up to the business to determine what they want to get out of the digital twin. If you ask me whether a 5G is applicable for a digital twin, definitely yes. What functionality you want to put in, that is uh, to be taken up by your uh, uh, your own business. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, Mr. Shiv Kumar, to add up to that point made by Mr. Shankar, if you want to minimize the risk of implementing in the tangible world. It is better to indulge in the all your experiments on the virtual world. So what I understood from my friends in Siemens, the digital twin definitely reduces the risk from design to after sale service. Anything you want to uh, try it out and then integrate the physical and the digital world with the minimum risk, you can achieve that before you plunge into for example, the jet engine design is a classic example of the digital twin application. Because otherwise, it has to be tested for 10 more years before it can be launched into a real aircraft. So these are the challenges that is there. And so more risk, uh, higher the risk in a particular sector, I think more adaptation of the digital twin and other simulation will happen is my opinion. Um, 5G definitely will enable it because of the speed and the low latency. Um, we come to the 12.30. I have a request before I close. There are no more questions in the text box. And I'm sure there are no other questions, no hands raising. I have a request to Shankar that 
the return on investment chart that he showed uh while it was a very yeah. small very small time we spent on that today it is a very popular question across oems tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 job shops everybody addresses the same question of the roi of the industry 4.0 5.0 technologies i would request him to have adele whenever it's convenient to him a separate session on a single topic called return on investment of implementing digital technology digital transformation with any number of use cases he would like to present brand agnostic or otherwise i leave it to him and uh, i think that will be a great value addition to our audience not only in bangalore chamber but also all the domains across the country sure ramoli will plan on that be happy to Thank you. share my Thank views you. Now, if Dr. Devrajan is still there, sir, would you like to pass the the final closing remarks and the word of thanks, sir? I think Dr. Devrajan has left the call. So, Rupa, it's your honors. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shankar Vishwanathan, for. Uh, um such a wonderful presentation and knowledge uh, sharing session i think uh, the participants had a lot of key takeaways from today's uh, session sir and we look forward to have your address in our chamber also we would be happy to host you sir uh, and thank you mr chandramoli sir for organizing such a wonderful session um, thanks to all the participants for uh, your kind participation and have a good day thank you once again thank you thank delighted you. to be here and thank you i want to personally thank mr shankar uh, my classmate and also mr jimmy francis who joined from abu dhabi also my classmate and so it's truly thank you very much uh, shankar shankar and chandramuri thank you very much it was oh, very, dr devraj is back sir please give your closing remarks okay. thank you sir excellent excellent presentation i think we asked you very clearly articulated with questions itself i think you have made six questions and made a beautiful analysis of entire thing uh, you've been a practical exponent of this thank you very much and we look forward for much more closer interaction in bcic though we meet in tbs we meet in bcic more and look forward for all the uh, experiential uh, or thoughts of yours always thank you very much adamoni and thank you rupa and thank you very much for all the participants i hope it was very useful seminar as usual and chandamuli has lot of thing in his back to bring more and more seminars into the bcic uh, area thank you very much sir thank you have a good day thank you thank, thank you all dr devrajan thank you mr thank shankar you. thank you dr devrajan thank you all of you thank you sir thank you i request all participants to continue post their questions to rupa and I, rupa can compile them once again whatever they could not ask and send it in a consolidated one sheet to mr shankar thank you thank you thanks have a good day bye have a good day and it's a very very busy monday thank you thank you thank you sir